In its day, the third generation Range Rover dubbed L322 was often referred to as the Bentley of SUVs. That is, up until Bentley actually released an SUV, so. It's amazing to drive, fantastic to own, and it's filled with some very strange and really cool features and some quirks. Some of these quirks make it extremely fun to own the Range Rover, while others leave you a bit confused as to what exactly Land Rover were thinking when they built it. So let's go over some of these quirks about the L322. First up is all of the attention to detail that went into the Range Rover. Now this isn't necessarily a quirk as much as it is something you expect when paying new nearly $100,000 for any car, but the attention to detail in the Range Rover is absolutely mesmerizing. There there's leather and metal and aluminum in places that you really would never think to even look. Ever in need of the spare tire or to get to the air compressor for the suspension? No worries, there's a nice leather pull to remind you that you're driving a Range Rover, not some cheap $60,000 Tahoe for some peasant. Leather lines absolutely everything in the Range Rover and it's nice to have while you wait on roadside assistance to come pick you up so they can pull your leather. But the attention to detail goes a bit further than that. Almost everything in the back that's a material that you might need is either a metal or aluminum or at least made to look like aluminum. The pulls for getting to the storage compartments in the back are also leather straps. But not only are they just leather straps, they're stitched leather straps just to make them a bit nicer. There's also an obscene amount of reminders on the exterior of the L322 to remind you and other people exactly what it is. So no matter what angle they're looking at the Range Rover from, they'll know you're in a Range Rover. In fact, there's two reminders on every single wheel. Range Rover, Range Rover, Range Rover, Range Rover, Range Rover. I have to admit, I love how the wheels have Range Rover engraved into them, but it doesn't just end there. There's two badges on the front, there's a badge on the back, and on older L322s and even now new L405 Range Rovers, there's also a little Land Rover badge. The reason the 2010 to 2012 model didn't get it was because Land Rover were a bit confused with their identity at the time. It happens. It's overwhelming how many badges are placed all throughout the exterior, but the interior is pretty bad about it as well. Range Rover, Land Rover, Land Rover, Range Rover, Range Rover. Why? I know what I'm driving. Another strange fact about the Range Rover that not too many people know is that it's actually been said that the interior was designed to be able to be used with gloves on. Apparently, Land Rovers in most parts of the world are actually used as utilitarian vehicles, which is news to me. Because of that, they wanted to make sure that the interior could easily be used if you had gloves on after a cold day. Unlike the Jaguar XJ of the same generation, the Range Rover can actually turn its heated and cooled seats on without going through the infotainment system, which is just surprising. More of that is shown when you look at the interior and see that the infotainment system actually has shortcut buttons to take you to home, navigation, audio and video, as well as phone. Rather than being soft touch buttons, they are physical buttons that are very easy to press and you always know where they are and it's extremely difficult to misclick a button. But you don't click it, you tap it. That's what she said. You get the point. Now it's not something that's going to make a huge difference to most people, but I find it cool to know what Land Rover were thinking when they actually designed the interior. On the topic of interiors, let's talk about the armrest. Now, most armrests in a car aren't that interesting, but in Land Rovers, they've always been a bit special because you don't have to conform to what a car manufacturer thinks would be a comfortable position for you. You get to choose wherever you would like your armrest to sit. There's no set in place settings, you pick, you tighten the bolt, and then your armrest stays in place. There's also the topic of the horn, which in most cars is really nothing too special. In most cars, including super high-end luxury cars, you press in on the middle of the steering wheel and it honks the horn. But when Land Rover were designing the L322, they decided that that was for poor people and much too aggressive. So they gave you two little slits on the side where you can tap on your horn and tell people that they're in your way. Because of that, you can choose which hand you would like to simply move over a little bit and tap your horn. The downside to this though is that it's actually extremely easy to accidentally honk your horn when you're just meaning to change the song and this has happened to me quite a few times, especially when I first bought the car. It's extremely awkward if you're sitting in a drive through and just want to change the song but instead you honk at everyone else in front of you as you're just waiting for your McRib. Then there's the TFT display, which I have talked about many times before, and in modern Range Rovers, it's completely customizable. You can change and show many different things on the screen, but in the Range Rover L322, you can't. There's really nothing you can change. 
It moves over slightly if you're in off-road mode, but aside from that, it just shows some information. I don't know why Land Rover would design the computer in the TFT display to not show the song that was playing or show navigation or anything like that when all of this technology was available clearly. But instead they waited for the L405 model, even though prototype L322 models showed a song playing in the TFT instrument cluster. In North American spec Range Rover L322s, you can also change the trip computer to display in kilometers per hour. Except it just gives you a little display box that shows your speed in kilometers while keeping the speedometer itself in miles per hour. Now what's strange about this to me is clearly they had the technology to display kilometers per hour in the Range Rover, because they had to design that for other markets. It really doesn't make any sense why they couldn't just have it change from miles per hour to kilometers per hour, especially considering, like I said, they had to design it anyway. This isn't something that makes a huge difference. You really would never switch back and forth like that, but it doesn't really make that much sense. Nevertheless, it's an incredible feature and there's really nothing to complain about it with, aside from it not showing the song, which would just be nice, but really, for the first of its kind, it does pretty well, and like I said, you can tell it's really the first of its kind for Land Rover. But with that, the Range Rover has many quirks. These were just some of my favorites. If you have one and you have found a few quirks about it, let me know what they are below. I absolutely love these things. They're so much fun to live with, but they are a bit strange in some ways and a bit over the top in others, which I just love. That's, that's my favorite part about the L322, and I love getting to learn new parts about it. So thanks for watching this video, guys. If you enjoyed, leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel, and I will see you next time.